Taylor, I, I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. You know, thank listening you, to you. some of your songs last night, preparing for this, it just <laughs> reminded me of my childhood and like things that, you know, emotions I had, breakups and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's just crazy. But I know you're here to talk about um, your 30 year anniversary. Can you believe that? No. So, so, 30 years. So, yeah, soundtrack of people's lives. It's an amazing feeling to be. Uh, like a thread just is, is incredible because you know I'm my person I'm my own being so I don't realize over years and years and hearing this so it was nice to come in here and cameramen are coming out and going oh my god yes Taylor like this is amazing yeah so, yeah 30 years amazing. tell it to my heart came out 30 years ago so what tell and me the what release yes so I re-recorded and re-released uh, it's a deluxe album the 30 year anniversary deluxe edition so with cool remixes and just yeah it's a real celebrate it's very celebratorial for me. Really yes. Is. yes. And you also have a new memoir coming out this fall. Yes. So this is the Tell It to My Heart year. This is the year 30 years acknowledging 30 years of, of maintaining, uh, consistently trying to be an artist in a world where, you know, being an artist is sometimes very difficult. You have to consistently reinvent yourself. Things that we were talking about on more business. It's a music business. So, yeah. yeah. So the memoir is part of the story of, which really was led off by a TED talk, the women, you know, TED women. And that was two years ago when I really said, it's time for a book. It's time for me to share this story with women and men and, and my fans and those that have been supporting me for so long and for myself. It's, yeah. very, it's been very cathartic. Yeah, really so has been. kind of give us a little sneak peek because sure. your subtitle in the book is How I Lost My, I'm not going to say the S word, and Conquered My Fear. I'm from Long and, Island. Yeah. You know what that word is. And found my voice. So, you know, obviously in this 30 years, you've, seen it all and you had some good days you had some bad days absolutely what t give us an idea of what the book uh the title how i lost my mm, right how conquered my fears and found my voice so literally my voice has always been a tool of expression right but it became um a place to hide it also became a place that was the uh the mirror i used or or the 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 mask, if you will, and it also helped me express myself in times and also say, this is what's going to get me out. Now, we all grow and we all are part of having some sort of adversity or not when we, we're challenged. Everybody has a life that has different challenges, whether it's a, a family member or however, we all have health. It can go in a million directions. Um, for me, the direction of the book, if we're talking specifically, why this meant so much to me, why after 30 years, how have I become such a, I guess, a, a woman of, of, of maintaining uh, and wanting to still be an artist after all this time and saying that it's important putting out material, it's important putting out work, it's important being an artist because producing things is what we do. You, every day you're sitting here and you're producing um, your face, your, 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 your story to the public and telling them, but you're also incorporating your, your power, your energy, and that's what has driven me all this time to basically stay and say, I'm Taylor Dane. I'm a woman in this business. I've chosen many different, many different ways to be here, and none of them have been. It's not a straight path. It's been very, very rocky at times, but not rocky where it's been self. Like there's been no drugs, no alcohol. I'm not trying to sit here and say that I'm a recovering addict, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong. Everybody has faced their challenge. So what the book does is it tells you how to overcome certain challenges that I've overcome through my story, my personal journey, and I'm still on the journey, and why I'm still here, and why I want to be here. Yeah, very so important. You you were you became successful at a very young age. Correct. Right yeah. out of the gate, yeah. you would think. Right. Yeah. When you look back at yourself and you know, your old music videos, what I mean, what would you tell yourself? What's your advice to yourself? <laughs> what you know now? A lot of it has to do with business. A lot of it has to do with, you know, the in the business world of artists and as musicians, we're very, very young, right? So you're twenty one and you're getting a record deal. Um, sometimes millions of dollars are in play, sometimes your entire career because you're signing contracts and you're signing uh, business and, and papers and, and really negotiating through terms that you're very, you know very little about. And people are coming in and taking massive chunks. It's not regulated the way people think. It's very much preyed on. And I feel you know, it's very different now it's in terms of what we're talking about in 1987 versus what's in 2018. Um, of course, there was no internet, there was no cell phones, there was no way to um, exchange, the amount of information that we get is enormous right now. And it also allows us to go through the Yelps and all these other decision-making processes, self, you know. But even at the time, I was DIY, I was a do-it-yourself girl. I was putting out music independently, I was doing singles, that's how we got Tell It To My Heart, it was an independent release. So I would say how or why, I mean, 
it's led me to this place. Again, back to the book, back to why I'm 30 years in, and it's uh, incredible. Yeah, speaking of financial mistakes, how did you balance your money, and what advice do you have for new up-and-coming artists who... Some artists are yeah. born with a family that they feel very supported by, and then, you know, their parents. I look at Taylor Swift. I look at, I look at the ones, and I used to look at some of the female artists, and, and I go, was it their boyfriend that was with them, the man, Mariah, you know, was it Tommy Mottola? They had a support system. Was it, did they do it on that? Madonna's a very good example of somebody that really just pulled up her bootstraps, came into New York with a certain amount of money in her pocket, and just said, I'm going to be a star in whatever it takes and how I'm going to do this, and she did it on her own terms. You know, it really is. So there's a lot of mentoring going on. In business world, I would say to you, wh who is your mentor? Who, you know, I talk to music students now and people that are in the game, my assistants, people that work for me, and I'm like, I graduated BU or I graduated, you know, music, I, I graduated Berkeley, I graduated, and I go, is there really school? Are they really teaching how to survive in the music business? Because that's really what it is. And now navigating through a lot of the social media, you know, and, and really most artists are independent artists these days, even including people that are established like myself. I'm an independent artist. So how? I mean, there's books now where you can read, and it's pretty astonishing. But I used to think that you had to be, it's who you surround yourself with. It's never going to change. And it's, the, you know, people who have, I think, a more accurate, more more consistent eye on the win. We can call it successfulness, but there's also a, a priority of what's your priorities. What's, what, what do you feel as a, as a person is going to, is it your friendships? Is it stepping on people or is it taking people with you for the ride? Is it noticing somebody's, you know, great qualities and saying that person I want in my camp and also what can I give in return? You know, it's receiving, giving. It's, it's, a, it's a part of the acronym of good business relationships, I believe. So what kind of businesswoman would you say you are today? I'm constantly learning, but um, I'm far more aware of the deal. And, you know, deals are there to be made. And this is part of the music business part of it, you know. So right now I'm sitting here talking about a 30-year 30 30 year album, you know, music that I just dropped. And I'm thinking about the streams and the Spotify's. And I'm thinking of the accounts. And I'm thinking about the people behind me. As well as I'm sitting here talking to this beautiful woman who's out here in front of, you know, talking about daily news and daily, you know, important topics. And I'm saying, okay, what can we do and what can we pull together? I'm thinking about brand partnerships. I'm thinking of ways to... Because my story now is about why am I here 30 years later? Not that I'm hungry to be here from at 21. You see, I've already proven myself. Mm -hmm. What puts me here today? Well, there's a need for my voice. I, there has to be. So that's what I have to believe. That's what I work through. And I say, what do I have to say that is so important in a connection? If there's a tool, it makes people do better things every day. It makes people, every time I get off the stage, I go, better decisions are made today. If I feel like I gave and I'm serving in a different, in a more positive way for people to make better decisions together, make better connections together.